Hey guys, and, uh, welcome back to another video. Now this is kind of a spontaneous video, because I was just building, um, this heating element here, which I'm gonna be turning into a, a hot plate thing, um, when I came across this. Now that element was out of an old oven, and it appeared that there was a thermometer in that. Now, I didn't know anything about these thermometers, I just thought it would be a really useful piece of thin, thin copper tubing, but it turns out that I believe that there's knack in here, which is an alloy of sodium and potassium. Now my reason for thinking this is if you cut it, there you can see the little burst of smoke. And that's because NAC is actually a liquid at room temperature and combusts in the air. Furthermore, I, when it, I do that into water, a small little explosion occurs. Although I won't show you this because um, I don't have any water nearby. Um, but if we do are able to get some NAC out of this, then I will show you the reaction at the end. I believe we can get some knack out of this, sodium potassium alloy. Anyhow, so, basically all we're going to need is some mineral oil. If you can get your hands on one of these, that would be awesome. So, anyhow, basically, we're just going to chop this into teeny little pieces, um, which are going to fly into the mineral oil. This will stop the sodium potassium alloy from reacting, where we can hopefully collect a small sphere of it, sphere of it or something. Um, I'm not totally sure how this is going to work, and I'm really hoping that there's a whole lot in the end here. Now, the only thing that I caution you with is that, um, luckily, when I, um, pinch it, it reseals the very tip of that, but if you were, if it did not seal, you could have knack leaking out, which w could catch your carpet on fire or something. So you might want to be careful with that. Anyhow, so I'm going to go get that mineral oil wet ready and see if I can collect some. So I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so it was indeed sodium potassium alloy, knack, and I'm so excited about that. There's all the little drops that we squeezed out of um, the larger tube. Now the smaller tube, we could save it because it's pretty cool and you tap the end or hit it or drop it in water or something. But it's not really of any use. Now to show you the reactivity of this, I am going to save this knack here, but there's still plenty left in this squished tube that I couldn't get out. And I was playing with it earlier just by dipping it in water. Now I'm pretty sure it's all reacted. Yeah, so I'm going to chop this bit and show you again in a moment. I'll be right back. Okay, squeezed a bit more out of the end. Oh my gosh. Oh no. Oh no. I'll be back in a Okay, so that's an example of how dangerous knack is. It actually went right through my blanket here, through my tarp underneath, and ate through my carpet. So this is not very good, and I don't know how I'm going to explain that to my parents. Um, anyhow, so I have it on here now. Now, I don't think this even got into the water. That little drop just fell, so it's... Oh, maybe it did go in the water. Anyhow, oh, I might actually chop this open again and get a little bit more on the end, um, and I'll actually show you, but hopefully it won't burn through my carpet this time. Be back in a moment. Okay, so I squeezed out the rest of that, and I did spill a teeny drop. You can see it right there, and I couldn't help but wonder what would happen if instead of putting it in water, put some water on it. So I do have safety goggles on this time. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, so you can definitely see how reactive that is and why it ate through my carpet and tarp and blanket. So anyhow, this stuff is seriously dangerous. And I've not yet conjugated the other stuff into a little blob, so I will be right back. But I'm pretty sure we're done with, for, with reactions for now because honestly, this stuff kind of scares me. And I don't even know how I'm going to properly store that. Um, probably just under mineral oil, but seriously, I don't know how many reactions I'm going to be doing with that. It is pretty cool, though, that you can actually get it out of there. Now, if you were wondering, um, you can make it yourself using about 80% sodium and 20% potassium, I believe. Um, I believe that's the ratio for our perfect knack, although several different combinations of those two metals will produce the liquid effect. So, anyhow, I'll conjugate it into a blob and be right back. Okay, so this time we're going to be really careful. Oh my gosh. Definitely see how reactive it is. Oh goodness. Okay, yep, that's definitely sodium potassium alloy. Uh, it's so there is still a bit in here, so I will squeeze out the rest and conjugate all that into a large blob so we can see our final result. Okay, so up here on my table here, um, I just have it all settling to the bottom so we can conjugate that into a sphere. But, um, I couldn't help but take apart the knob to which the wire was attached where I cut it. So this is that. 
And if there was sodium potassium alloy in here, then there's probably some in here. So I'm going to take that apart. And I'm not sure how well that's going to work, but if we could get some more, that would be awesome. So I'll take that apart and tell you what's in there. Okay, so there's our final yield of sodium potassium alloy, and you can see it's fair, that's a fair bit. Now, um, so if you have an old oven, definitely try to get that um, weird thing out of it. I think it might have been a thermometer or something, um, because it's very useful. Now, even though we already um, used all these pieces here, they still contain a bit of sodium potassium alloy inside them. And they are pretty cool to play with, so if you just chop them in half and then dip them in water, you should get a pretty cool reaction. So save those. And as for this longer one over here, um, save this one also, because it... Uh, has a bunch of sodium potassium alloy inside of here, although it is significantly less. Now in that final thing that I did t um, take out from the knob, there was a little container which probably contained a whole lot of sodium potassium alloy, but the only way to open it would have been to saw it, which would have probably ignited it, and that just would have ended badly. Now, so that is basically how to get sodium potassium alloy from an oven, and um, you have to be extremely careful during this. Make sure you always wear safety goggles when handling this stuff, because as you can see, even a teeny drop is enough to burn through three layers of fabric. So hope you enjoyed, and um, I'll see you guys in a future video. Okay, bye.